Let's start off then by talking about what's gone wrong with my Golf GTI TCR. Hello guys and welcome to this Volks Wizard video which is a six month running report on living with my Golf GTI TCR that you see here. But before we get into that I just want to say a big thanks to everybody that has supported the channel during 2020. Whether that be simply through watching videos, subscribing to the channel and especially to those that have bought the Volks Wizard 2021 wall calendar. If you want one it's not too late, we've still got a few left. There's a link to the eBay advert in the description below but yeah big thanks to everybody it's been a very difficult year but it's not been a bad year for youtube because there have been times when people have been sat at home without much to do and that's made the view counts pretty good generally obviously there have been lots of opportunities to go on like events and stuff because they just haven't existed let's hope 2021 sees a big change in that particularly from sort of spring onwards when everything starts to happen anyway let's now talk about this car so i bought this in june i had wanted one the previous year, but I was just about to move house and it seemed a bit too much of an indulgence to buy a car like this at that point. So I ended up buying my Seat Leon diesel. It was a great car, but come the end of lockdown, this car was offered to me and it was at the right kind of price. And I just thought, yeah, it's too good an opportunity to miss. And the whole lockdown thing and COVID has made me realize that you only live once. So yeah, let's not let time slip through our hands and drive cars that aren't the cars we want to drive let's drive what we really want to enjoy and I'm pleased to say that the six month have worked out at least as good as I expected but I'll go into a bit more detail now as I walk you around the car okay let's start off then by talking about what's gone wrong with my Golf GTI TCR well in a nutshell not an awful lot after a three-hour journey with the headlights on there was an error message about the headlights on the instrument cluster they carried on working and when I turned the ignition on and off it never came back and they've always worked perfectly fine since so that was just a, a one-off glitch i hope an ongoing issue though is a rattle from the split fold rear seat hinge at the base of the back seat so that's always sort of chattering away particularly when the car's cold and because the suspension's quite hard it does sort of make it probably more apparent than it would be in a softer golf an easy warranty fix i think if i can be bothered but i really want to have a look at it myself and see if i can sort it i had it on a mark three golf exactly the same problem so yeah, it shouldn't be too hard to fix. So yeah, that was short, wasn't it? I took it on a track day as well, which you thought would break things, but it's been perfectly fine. I got the brakes really, really hot. It was August. It was a very, very hot day at Bedford. Bedford's pretty heavy on your brakes as well. And they were really making a very loud noise when they were cooling down. I was sat in the car and it felt like somebody was banging an iron bar on the gearbox. That's the noise they made while they were cooling down which I thought I'd pushed them too far really and they were going to be distorted but nope because they're two-piece discs they were perfectly fine and have been ever since not a hint of judder so that that's good and that just shows you that the TCR's modifications over say the Club Sports and the Performance Pack GTI are worth it because those two cars have got solid discs not the two-piece ones of this car. Right let's now talk about modifications because being a Golf of course there are some. Now my favourite modification has been changing the matte black mirror casings for these carbon fiber ones which were just over 100 pounds if you can buy them you can't buy them anymore i've got them second hand but they are beautiful they really make the car look a lot more quality than the horrible sort of look like they've been painted with an aerosol originals so that's good i fitted an itg panel filter in the autumn and yeah it's just simple straight swap for the original one which is in there i did have I fear that it would increase the fuel consumption but it never did but I need to do probably more testing with that in the spring see if we can get some um, proper yeah data down for it and see what the difference really is maybe even dyno it you never know but yeah that's still in there I didn't take it out so yeah the car breathes better discernibly better with that fitted a more recent modification has been the fitting of the Osram dynamic mirror indicators they're quite expensive for what they are but they're a quality product and yes you can buy Chinese ones for a fraction of the price but they won't be approved for use in Europe these are proper TUV approved so if you want to make sure you've got something that's actually legal for use in this country you need to buy the Osram ones uh, fit and finish is just like OEM so they were a joy to fit and yes you don't see them while you drive but it's nice that they do that and that you know you don't see these when you're driving but people fit these quite a lot to cars. 
so yeah little little stuff really um interior wise a couple little mods swapped out the plastic dead pedal and fitted you can probably guess what a stainless steel one i don't think they're particularly expensive 30 or 40 quid it's really frustrating because if you bought a left-hand drive car you'd get the stainless steel dead pedal for the uk market we just get the plastic one which is a real shame, which is the same with every, every other Golf. The sporty Golf should have stainless steel right across. So the retrofit one is a nice touch. You can see it's a similar style to the pedal, and it's really easy to fit. I've also got some more mats to go in. These are the originals. I did want to preserve them. You can see they're a bit dirty now. They're not too far gone. But with all the mud around, with all the rain, I just thought I'd put those in a bag and save them for, you know, the next owner of the car, whenever that may be. In the meantime, we're not going to slum it too much. I've found in my stores a set of club sport mats, I believe, which look pretty good. And um, yeah, they've got the right part number for club sport on there. There's a bit of wear, so they've been used, but I just, I think because club sport owners can be a bit anal, somebody's bought some new mats and just uh, kept those as spares. So yeah, they'll go in and that'll be it i don't think i've done anything else you know it came with the oz wheels instead of the 19 inch pretorias the car was originally sold on because the first owner sorry second owner didn't like the ride quality on 19s and didn't like the lack of grip from the cut twos which i perfectly understand so these have been great they actually made the car more usable because these good years are quite efficient in that they don't seem to have much rolling resistance so they're better on fuel than cup twos for sure plus the ride quality is acceptable for daily driving so it's made the mpg on average probably in the mid 30s but you can top 40 if you're careful um yeah on my motorway run here it'll do 36 37 the long-term figure is about 32.8 you've got to bear in mind i do enjoy driving this car when i get the opportunity it's not all about economy and this the reason i really like it is because you put it into comfort mode or eco mode it's a super efficient quiet comfortable car but at either end of my commute i've got roundabouts and on the way home i've got the most amazing sort of roller coaster of a country road where i put it into race mode or individual mode and really really enjoy it so yeah it does it does do everything so the fuel consumption at 32 is actually pretty good considering the pleasure i've had from it i still also like looking at it which is quite a surprise i've had to say the very plain golf estate on my driveway for the last few weeks and i love the understated nature of this you know it's packing 10 horsepower more than the tcr and especially on 17 inch winter wheels it looks so plain but then when i looked out of my window this morning and there was the tcr i was like a little boy really because it's it's a great looking car and well i don't think the mark 8's done an awful lot to change that perception of it yeah as i look at it now hmm, it is beautiful and i remember when i did the first video on one of these i think when ed jackson aps let me drive his car i was just saying it was the best looking uh gti ever when he had it on 19 inch pretorias and it probably still is Price-wise, well, let's talk about depreciation because whilst a lot of people will finance these, the cost to finance will be based upon how much money they will lose. Now, I think roughly around a year ago, there were still quite a few of these knocking around the dealer network. Where were we then? We were in um, end of 2020, 2019 going to 20. So yes, they've done the 2020 model year cars and a few of them were dealer demos. As soon as they sort of dried up, which would have been during lockdown and after lockdown, the prices of sort of stabilized a bit now i had one of these for sale last year 29 grand with about 2,000 miles on the clock i reckon it would be that today so yeah as is common when a car comes out of the ruthless dealer network and the only ones available are second hand the prices tend to stabilize so that's um that's pretty good yeah they've done pretty well we'll see what happens with this sort of another lockdown we're in now it's interesting to compare it with club sport though which i say has gone up in the last year a bit so about 10 percent so you could buy a good club sport for probably 22 23 a year ago now you're probably looking 25 26 which means that these two are going to converge 
and there is no real rational reason why you'd buy a club sport over a TCR. It's got 265 or 290 with a silly overboost. It hasn't got the bigger brakes. It's got the aero kit, but, well, anyway, watch the video. You'll see how I much prefer the TCR, even before I bought one. And the beauty of it is it's not, it wasn't limited. So, in theory, there should have been loads of these around, but because they were ridiculously expensive, at over 40 grand with the Akrapovic cars, if you ordered the performance pack, they never really sold that many. So they are quite exclusive, as it happens. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this Volks Wizard video, which is an update on living with my Golf GTI TCR. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Please do comment. I do read them all. I try and reply to as many as possible. Please share the video amongst other people. And please, please, please do subscribe. And I'll see you for the next video soon in 2021.